Graham Hancock, our guest, right here on Coast to Coast. Two individuals I want to talk about this hour, of course, is the work of uh, Rick Strassman, and also we'll talk about Francis Crick again as yes. well. But tell me about Dr. Strassman. Okay, well, Doc, Doc, Dr. Rick Strassman um, is, 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 is a fascinating man, a brilliant scientist, uh, and he's, he's a, a, a psychiatrist uh, at the University of New Mexico. And uh, back in 2001, uh, Rick published a very important book called DMT, the spirit molecule, and that uh, extremely important book uh, outlines the results of his fascinating research. This was the first research uh, using hallucinogens and human volunteers that had been authorized by the federal government of the United States for more than 20 years. And Rick started this research in the 1990s and, and finished it in the, the late 1990s using hundreds of volunteers and administering to them the powerful short-acting hallucinogen DMT, which is also the principal ingredient uh, of the ayahuasca brew mm -hmm. uh, in the Amazon. Now, in the Amazon, because it's mixed with another plant, the effects last much longer. They last two to three hours. Whereas DMT given in pure form, as Rick Strassman did at the University of New Mexico with his volunteers, produces an extremely powerful out-of-body journey into another realm that lasts only about 20 minutes and then full normal consciousness returns. As Rick started to administer this substance to his volunteers, he began to notice as he compiled their reports over a period of years that all of them, even though they didn't actually know each other very often and had no shared or common background, that all of them seemed to be reporting meeting the same beings in their altered state Isn't of consciousness. That something? The same ones. The same ones with, uh, <laughs> in the same extraordinary settings and that, these, and that these beings seem to want to communicate with them and communicate information to them. But even more intriguing, 80% of the volunteers reported experiences that were absolutely identical to the experiences that are reported by UFO abductees, by people who believe they've been abducted mm -hmm. by aliens on board UFOs. And many of the same things that the beings are reported to do uh, to alien abductees, such as putting implants, into their bodies, uh, doing strange experiments right. on them, uh, interfering with their reproductive system, manipulating their DNA. These experiences were all reported by Rick Strassman's volunteers. The pineal gland in the human brain mm -hmm. produces DMT, the powerful hallucinogen. We actually make it very important to emphasize that Rick Strassman is not a reductionist. He doesn't reduce this to just brain chemistry. He believes that what is happening is that we need to understand the brain as a receiver, rather like a television receiver. Mm -hmm. And for most of us, that television receiver is tuned into channel normal all the time. What happens when we take a substance like DMT or when our own brains overproduce it or when we use other shamanic techniques to enter altered states of consciousness is that the receiver wavelength of the brain is altered and we pick up, well, Rick calls it channel DMT, where real beings, an utterly real reality that is not accessible to us in ordinary states of consciousness suddenly does become accessible to us. So he was suggesting that these experiences are absolutely real, but that our very materialistic science cannot get to grips with it because it is only accessible in certain states of consciousness. And those states of consciousness may be mediated by DMT and that it cannot be an accident that our evolution has given us this potential. Evolution gives us nothing unless it's useful. And it therefore suggests that these altered states of consciousness are incredibly useful to the human species. And indeed, to come back to the, the theme of my book, uh, I, I do argue that the extraordinary before and after event that took place in human prehistory around 40,000 years ago when a light was suddenly switched on in our heads all around the world precisely had to do with our discovery of altered states of consciousness which gave us access to these other realms and to the vital information that is available to us in those realms. It seemed to open a doorway inside our minds that lead us through into another dimension and that these uh, experiences are extraordinary and mysterious and desperately need to be researched. Rick Strassman, he is now absolutely convinced, as I am, that reality is much more complicated uh, than we imagine and that the very small part of reality 
that we normally relate to. Uh, like an iceberg, the tip of the iceberg is above the surface, but nine-tenths of it is below the surface. Nine-tenths of reality may be below the surface of our normal everyday consciousness, but it may be vitally important, vitally important, for us to find ways to access that other nine-tenths of reality below the surface, and that's what altered states of consciousness appears to allow us to do.